Well, I think we've come to an understanding in recent years that the, the biology of the blood vessel wall, particularly the coronary arteries around the heart, is not only determined by cells within the wall of the artery and the lining of the artery, but importantly, it's the fat surrounding the artery that has a really important influence on what goes on within the vessel wall. And I think that's something that's been ignored by vascular biologists and by cardiologists for many years. It was felt that the fat was just there. It, was, it had changes in linked to other changes in fat depots in the body, whether it's within the organs of the body or within the subcutaneous tissues. But the idea that the fat around blood vessels plays an important role in determining the health of the blood vessels and their susceptibility to developing disease is a really new concept. So the first part of our new understanding is that the, the wall of the blood vessel and the surrounding fat communicate with each other. It had been recognized for some time in our understanding of adipose tissue that cells within adipose tissue release chemical and biological messengers and they in turn can have an effect on the biology of the blood vessel wall. I think the new finding from our work published last year is that the blood vessel also releases chemical and biological signaling molecules and these influence the biology of the fat surrounding the blood vessel. I think we were interested in two areas of new research. One was understanding what those signaling pathways are and what might be the biological relevance of this relationship between the blood vessel wall and the adipose tissue in the end result of coronary artery disease. So that's the first area of interest, which is understanding biological signaling pathways and asking the question, which of these might be targets for therapy? But the second one was to try and get an insight into what's happening in the wall of the blood vessel, which has historically been extremely difficult using non-invasive tests. Specifically, to try to identify inflammation within the wall of the coronary artery has been extremely difficult, even though it's known to be a pivotal process in the development of coronary artery disease. And so we tested the idea that it might be possible to study the fat around the coronary artery as a way of giving an insight into what was happening within the wall of the coronary artery. And that might give us not just biological understanding, it might give us a way of detecting inflammation and targeting it. I think there are two possible clinical outcomes. One is that we might, in the future, look to therapies that might not just target only the lining of the blood vessel and the risk factors that we know operate right there. But we might have interventions, therapies, lifestyle modifications that can alter the biology of the perivascular adipose tissue. That's the fat around the blood vessel wall. That's the first. I think the second is that if perivascular adipose tissue gives us an insight into what's going on in the wall of the blood vessel, then paying more attention to the perivascular adipose tissue through imaging techniques, for example, offers us the opportunity to learn about the blood vessel wall and to detect inflammation in the blood vessel wall, which is something we've really not been able to do before. And it could completely change the way we diagnose coronary artery disease, identify patients who are at the highest risk, that's stratifying patients, and also looking at new ways where we might be able to measure the response to drugs, particularly those related to inflammation and cardiometabolic risk. I think the challenge rather than the highlight is to understand how inflammation in coronary artery disease can be targeted therapeutically. We've had a number of major trials in the last year or two that show us that in principle inflammation remains an important therapeutic target. But giving anti-inflammatory drugs to all patients at risk of or with pre-existing coronary artery disease is neither practical nor economically realistic. So there's a real pressing need to understand which of our patients has a form of disease which is most related to active inflammation, how to detect it non-invasively, how to target therapies to those individuals, and how to measure the response to therapy.